Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to graph exponential functions. Alright, the instructions for the example we're going to be graphing is as follows. We are to graph the given exponential function. After that, we are to state the domain, the domain, the range, uh, intercepts, and asymptotes. Then uh, we are to label the graph. Okay, then label the graph completely. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, using the results we got from the, the from the properties, basically the domain range intercepts and asymptotes to label the graph that we generated initially. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and uh, start. The function under consideration is y equals two to the x. Okay, so why is this an exponential function? It is an exponential function because we have a number raised to a variable exponent, okay? So if you have any real number raised to an, a variable exponent, that um, is an exponential term. So we have y equals that term, so we have an exponential function, okay? So to graph this one, we're going to be making use of a table of values we're going to be going from negative 2 all the way to positive 2. Okay, so you can use more values if you want. The more um, input and output values you have, the more accurate your result is going to be. Alright, so in the middle we have y equals 2 to the x, where we'll be carrying out our computations to determine the output value for each x input. Okay, and then after our computation, we'll just place our final output value here in the Y column. So let's start with negative two. So if this is the input, what is Y going to be? Y is gonna be two raised to the negative two power. Because in this exponential function, the input is the X, right? So we have X as the input, we simply replace the x in this function with negative 2 and then we're going to simplify okay now do you recall the negative power property of exponents also known as the reciprocal property of exponents let's go over that real quick so I like you to recall that if you have x raised to the negative m the negativity of the exponent will cause the term with the negative exponent to get reciprocated. All right, so we have x to the negative m, this becomes one over x to the m. So as soon as you reciprocate the term with the negative exponent, the power becomes positive. All right, so let's apply that idea here. What is two to the negative two going to be? 2 to the negative 2 will become 1 over 2 square. All right. And then 2 square is 2 times 2, which is 1 over 4. So our output for this input is 1 fourth. All right. Let's move on to the next input value, which is negative 1. So what is our output when x is negative 1? Follow the same procedure as we did in the previous row, we just input negative 1 for our x. We'll now apply the reciprocal property of exponents. So we reciprocate this term here to yield 1 over 2 to the first power, which is just 1 over 2. So our output when x is negative 1 is positive 1 half. Now let's take a look at um, 0. What's the output? You have 2 raised to the 0th power. If you raise 2 to the 0th power, your, 
your output is simply going to be 1. Okay, so we have 1. Now let's switch to the negative, the positive x input values. If um, x is 1, what is our output going to be? It's going to be 2 to the first power, and that is going to simply be 2. So y is going to be 2 when x is 1. Okay, we're going to be computing one more output value, that is the output when x is positive 2. Okay, let's take a look at um, what that one is. So when x is positive 2, we're going to have y equals 2 to the second power. Okay, so 2 to the second power is 2 times 2, which is 4. So our output in this case will be 4. All right, let's set up our coordinate system for graphing. Okay, so whenever you want to set up your coordinate system to graph any function, you want to take a look at the um, behavior of the inputs and the output values. If you take a look at my input values, it's spread symmetrically about 0. We're going from negative 2 to 2, so our y-axis will be positioned right in the center. All right, and if you take a look at the output values, they are all positive. So that basically means that um, our x-axis will be positioned at the bottom since we're not looking at any negative y values. Okay, so let's keep that in mind and go ahead and set up our coordinate system. So let's say this is my um, y-axis. Let's move that down a little bit more. That's my, my x-axis. I'm going to position my y-axis right in the center, somewhere in the center. So we have an even spread between negative 2 and 2. Okay, let's shift our um, x-axis down a little bit because we're going to be counting by fourths. Let's calibrate our x-axis first. So 1, 2, 3, let's call that 1. And then 1, 2, 3, call that 2. That's good enough. We have 0 in the center. 1, 2, 3, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, negative 2. All right. So that's that for my input values. Now, if you take a look at my outputs, the LCD of the denominator is 4, so we're going to go by fourths um, so we can easily graph our fractional terms. So we have 1, 2, 3. 3 quarter, that's 1, and then 1, 2, 3 quarter, that's 2, and then we have 1, 2, 2 and 3 quarter, that's 3, and then lastly 1, 2, 3 and 3 quarter, and that goes 4, all right? Now let's proceed with our graphing. For x equals negative 2, our output is one fourth. Okay, so let's grab that. So for negative two, we have one fourth right there. For x equals negative one, our output is one half. So it's dead in the center. Now, one thing I would like you to note is that no matter how big our negative input is, it eventually gets reciprocated and it enlarges the denominator. So the, out, the output keeps getting really, really small as this approaches negative infinity. So this eventually gets really, really close to zero. It never becomes zero, but it gets arbitrarily close, okay? That will result in an asymptote as we'll talk about momentarily. Now, and we have zero for our input. Our output is going to be one. When our input is 1, our output is 2, and when our input is 2, our output spikes all the way to 4. So we can see the exponential behavior of, this, um, of these points. The exponential function is one of the fastest growing functions compared to um, many other functions out there like your logarithmic function, which is pretty slow, or your polynomial function, so you might want to keep that in mind. 
Okay, let's go ahead and connect the dots. So let's do the positive side first. It doesn't look good. Let's try that again. Go from the top to the bottom. So you have your exponential function, something like that. And then approach is zero. Try again. So you go something like this. Okay, and it's, it's growing at an increasing rate of growth, okay? And then he goes something like that. Doesn't really touch the y-axis. It gets really, really close to the x-axis. Okay, so that's um, our exponential function for you. Now let's start with the domain and range, okay? The dimensions of our graph. So let's start with domain. <clears throat> the domain is basically the horizontal span of the graph. How wide does the graph go? Okay, so we'll be taking a look at the projection of the graph on the x-axis. This graph goes forever in the left direction to negative infinity and in the right direction you see that tilt it heads forever in the right direction. So if we project this graph on the x-axis, imagine you have a flashlight and you project the graph, the shadow on the x-axis, this graph will cover the entire x-axis. So the width of this graph is from the far left negative infinity to the far right positive infinity. That is how wide the graph is. Now let's take a look at the range. Okay. Now when we're looking at the range, we're looking at the vertical span of the graph. How high does the graph go and how low does the graph go? Um, the graph gets really close to zero but never touches it and then um, when heading up it heads up to infinity. Okay, so let me just draw something here. So it gets close to zero, doesn't touch it and then when going up it goes up forever all the way to infinity. That's the vertical span of the graph. So we are, our range is from zero all the way to infinity, all right? And then this is the um, interval notation. If you wanted to write this as in inequality notation, let me show that to you also. For inequality notation, you can go, you're going from negative infinity, less than x, and x is less than infinity. And then for the range, <coughs> You are going from zero to infinity, so you can simply write y is greater than zero. All right. Okay, so that's the range. Now the intercepts. Intercepts. Let's start with our y-intercept. If you want to find your y-intercept, what you're going to have to do is set all the other variables to zero. This is a two-dimensional graph, so we're going to set x to zero, okay? So what do we get when we set x to zero and the function two to the x? We have y equals two to the zero. If we simplify that, we have a y-intercept, which is two to the zero, a value of one. All right, and we can see that clearly here. What is our x-intercept in this function? For the x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to zero. You set all the other variables that are not x to zero, then you solve the function for x. So y, um, so we have the function y equals two to the x. If we set y to zero, we will have zero equals two to the x. If we wanna solve this, we can take log base two of both sides, or you can take the natural logarithm of both sides. Um, let me see which one we want to do here. Well, since the bases are different, we can just use natural logarithm. Okay, if you use log base two, you can do that also, but you just have to change your base at the end. Okay, so let's see what we have. Um, we take the natural logarithm of zero, equals the natural logarithm of uh, 2 raised to the x power. The reason why we're taking the natural logarithm of both sides is, is because 
we can use the property of natural logs to power down this exponent. Okay, so we can write this as a natural logarithm of 0 equals x times the natural logarithm of 2. Now, if you direct your attention to the left side of this equation, we have a big problem. Okay, ln of 0 has no real solution, no, it doesn't have a real output. Okay, so if you look at this setup right here, this equation has no solution because um, the natural logarithm does not have um, an acceptable output when you have zero or anything less than it as an input value. Okay, so that's why we have no solution here. So let me show you uh, with a calculator real quick. Sometimes if you get confused as to what the domain constraints of a function is, you can always test it out with your calculator. So if we want to compute the natural logarithm of zero, we end up with a domain error, okay? Because um, zero is not an acceptable input for the natural logarithmic function. So no solution there. So what does that mean? That basically means we have no x-intercepts, no x-intercepts for this function. Now let's consider our asymptotes, okay? So um, vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote is basically the um, horizontal line that this graph gets arbitrarily close, uh, I'm sorry, the vertical line that this graph gets arbitrarily close to as you tend towards infinity in the direction of that line. So if you take a look at this function, it, uh, there is no vertical line that bounds its expansion horizontally. Okay, we talked about the range, bef the domain earlier, that it goes forever in both directions. So we don't have any vertical line anywhere in the domain where it gets arbitrarily close to as you tend towards infinity in the direction of that line. So as for vertical asymptotes for your exponential function, there are none. How about your horizontal asymptote? Is there a horizontal line that this function, the graph of this function, gets arbitrarily close to as you head towards infinity in the direction of that line? And the answer is absolutely. We have the horizontal line y equals zero. Okay, let's go ahead and graph that. So the line basically sits on top of your um, x-axis. So that goes your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's label the graph. Um, the things we can label here are our intercept. We have only one, so that right there is your y-intercept of 1 and we have no x-intercepts. We also have a horizontal asymptote. So our horizontal asymptote is right there, horizontal asymptote and the equation is y equals 0. That's your horizontal asymptote. We don't have any vertical asymptotes um, on this graph. So there goes your exponential function y equals 2 to the x with the properties and also some relevant components labeled. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of exponential functions, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions concerning what we just presented, or any um, pre-calc concepts in general, just place your questions in the comments section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgoodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.